Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 79 for Wednesday, January 6th, 2016. Reminders. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. It's the new year, and many of you might be trying to refine how effective you can be when it comes to simply getting things done. I know, at least for myself, my life is so busy that it's next to impossible to keep track of everything I need to accomplish without some sort of help from my mobile device. Big surprise there. Of course, Google has rolled out notes and reminders across a number of its own apps and services. For example, you can fire off a Google Now voice command saying something like, remind me tomorrow morning to pick up eggs, and that simple command will set up a reminder. Lickety split. Not everyone chooses to use Google Now for those kinds of things. And truth be told, there are a number of other apps in the Play Store that tackle this scenario in different ways. Some of them even offer a little bit more flexibility when compared to Google Now. So I gathered up a few of the more well-designed, if not lesser-known, reminder apps from the Play Store to pit them against each other in this week's Best of the Best. That notification shade might be handy for telling you about the many things that you've installed on your device, what you're doing, or updating you on your social network activity, but how about putting it to work as a reminder tool? That's what the open source app called Recurrence is all about, and it's pretty pared down and straightforward here. You just tap the app and uh, then the floating action button there to add a new reminder notification. Here, you'll give it a name, something like drink a glass of water. This notification content field is for adding any extra contextual information to that notification, perhaps some instructions, so something like, fill glass full of water, then drink it until the glass is empty. I'll set the time of day for the reminder to appear, as well as which day or days to summon it. I'm given the choice of many icons to associate with that reminder, as well as color choices for the particular icon that'll appear to the side of the information in my notification shade. And finally, I can set a recurrence to that reminder so it appears on a regular schedule at whatever interval I choose. And with that, blammo, the notification will eventually appear in my shade waiting for me to act on it uh, as a reminder and ultimately dismiss it when I'm done. The app, as I said, is pretty basic, but it's designed well and even better, it's totally free with no ads, and the source is available on GitHub. Find Recurrence today in the Play Store for free. How about reminders based on your location? Here's Rover Geo Reminders, a new app that hinges on some pretty powerful location-based smarts with a nice material design touch. We'll tap the action button to start a reminder and name it Get a Milkshake at Amy's drive through a little description in there if necessary to. Now for a location, I can either drop a pin where I'm at right now, which is here at work, or pick a location on the map. Let's do that. Rover scans for nearby places if that helps you out. And in this case, Amy's drive through is in another town. So let's go ahead and do a search for that place. And sure enough, there it is. I'll tap that location pin down below and it's then imported into Rover. There's this radius slider, which you can use to determine how close you need to be in order to receive that notification, as well as notification points for entry or exit. Doing this, you can determine if this is a reminder that's meant to pop up when you're getting close to that location or when you're driving further away. And how often do I want this to happen? Every time I'm this close? Well, 
their shakes really are the bomb. So yes, every single time. And this is most certainly a personal entry as opposed to something related to business. So I'll set that. And if drinking shakes, by the way, is someone's business, well, I'm in the wrong business apparently. Now let's save that. And there it is at the top of my list, ready to appear when I'm close to Amy's drive through I'll tap into that entry and I'm given even more info uh, to tweak a nice little navigation pane with all types of transport options below. There's a notes pane for adding extra content there. I know their chocolate shakes in particular are very excellent, so let's go ahead and put that in there. And finally, this weather tab lets me know what conditions are like near that location, including temperature, wind, humidity, all that stuff. Rover is free with a few limitations, the most impactful being a three notes per task limit, but the premium version is only $1.99 from inside the app for complete access. Find Rover, spelled R-O-V-R, Geo Reminders in the Play Store now. Here's an app that makes it easy to throw yourself a reminder right into your notification tray where it will stay until you're ready to get off your butt and do something about it, basically. Noti notification reminder is a floating app that appears over the top of your environment and brings with it again a nice material design here i'll fire up the app and drop in a title for my reminder let's say it's a grocery list i can actually change the note from a normal text-based list to a numbered or a bulleted list if i prefer let's see i need to pick up some green peppers there's red peppers maybe some onions, a pound of chicken, flour tortillas, and oh yes, salsa. I can tap to send that directly to my notification shade and there you go, displayed neatly for me to discover when I go to the store next time. I'll tap to edit that now so we can kind of improve upon it. Swiping that row of icons there allows me to choose an icon that is right for this particular task. The default is fine if you want speed, however, there are plenty to pick from here. Let's go with the shopping cart because we're going to the store. I can tap the color palette as well if I want to add a little colorful spice to the icon in that notification shade entry. And this alarm button means that I can tell Noti when the alarm should sound, what the device should do when it goes off, like wake up the screen, as well as how often to repeat the reminder so I don't, you know, miss out on fajita night at home. And there you go. When I'm done with that notification, I simply tap and remove it and move along. Oh, and uh, voice input is included as well, which makes reminder setting just a bit less of a task in itself. Noti notification reminder is lightweight and easy to use. You can find it now in the Play Store for free. So which one works for your brain? Is it recurrence with its low footprint and stripped down approach? Is it Rover, which packs a bunch of location-based features so you'll get that reminder when you're out and about? Or is it Noti for creating not only simple reminders, but even detailed checklists inside your notification shade? Well, I suppose I'm the one picking here, and if I had to choose, which I do, it's kind of my job, I'd pick Rover. I especially appreciate that you can kind of fire off a quick reminder and then edit it later to include so much other useful information, the app integration, the proximity, as well as the, the ability to choose whether it fires off when you're getting closer or further away. It kind of makes this a really handy uh, tool for the busybody. But in all fairness, I have to admit, I'm such an avid user of Google's reminders that I'll probably continue using those on my device going forward. It's hard to deny the embedded approach, right? It's neatly inter intertwined with everything, with the operating system. Uh, it's hard to justify opening up another app when all you need to do is learn a few voice commands. All right, coming up next, a game. Well, it's kind of a game. It's more of a tool to allow you to create your own game. Let's take a look at this week's big app. Have you ever wondered what kind of platform game you would make if you only knew how to do it? Me, I'm useless when it comes to coding. So I was intrigued to find Draw Your Game in the Play Store. Here's what you need. You take a blank piece of white paper in, in real life and four colored felt tip markers, black, green, red, and blue. On the paper, I'll use the black marker to draw the floors and the walls inside my level. And I can make this as complex as I want. Objects that your character can move, actually shift around the play field, are drawn in blue, maybe a few boulders or something like that. 
Bouncy pads can be drawn, these little trampolines, they're drawn in green to, you know, hop your character up uh, even higher than it could jump without the trampoline. And then the objects to avoid, let's say spiky things here, are drawn in red. Now, once your level looks awesome, you just use the app to snap a picture with your phone. And then you'll want to do a few other tweaks here. You can drop the character where you want the starting point to be. So if you want it to start up top on a platform or down below, uh, once that's imported, you can do things like tweak the size of your character in space compared to the level. Also, you want to define a goal. Is your goal to destroy all of those blue movable elements by touching them to a red element? Or is your level an elaborate maze that you want your character to escape from? Now, while playing the level, you can switch between 2D mode, which is kind of showing you the drawing that you made, more or less, or 3D mode, which adds some extra dimension to the stuff that you drew on your paper. I'm no level designer, but there was something particularly awesome about busting out a sheet of paper and some markers to design a game for my phone. The full version is a 99 cent upgrade that gives you unlimited creation of your worlds, new character choices, and a full unencumbered adventure mode Though I did have problems syncing that upgrade to a second phone, so there are definitely some bugs to be worked out there. I'm sure they'll be resolved. Regardless, part of the fun here is sharing your creations with other users, which you can do with the full version, and exploring their levels as well. Find Draw Your Game in the Play Store right now. I imagine if you give yourself some time, you can probably come up with something a little bit better than I obviously did. Growing up, I was a huge fan of this one game by Electronic Arts called Adventure Construction Set. I spent hours making my own worlds. They weren't very good. Also creating my own tracks inside a, a Nintendo game called Excite Bike. Maybe you've heard of that one. It's nice to see that idea being applied on mobile, especially because you draw it up and maybe wait 30 seconds before it's playable. So you're taking something tangible and suddenly playing it on your device. Get yourself some markers and get to work. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. And you can send those to me, actually. Send me a picture or, or the level or whatever to arena at twit.tv, as well as other apps that you happen to like, and I'll feature them on the show. You can also post those to the subreddit. That's androidapparena.reddit.com and share them with everyone by doing that. The show plays live every Wednesday around 5 p.m. Pacific now following Tech News Today. You can tune in for that live playback at twit.tv slash live. And the new episode will always appear later that evening in the feeds and on the show page at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I'll see you next week in the arena. Mm -hmm.